Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. And I'm in a little patch of woods here, right across from the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom. And it's an area that we do a lot of demos during the Pathfinder School classes. So I've got a couple of timbers that are already cut out here for some demos that we do during some of our classes I'm going to use in some of this today. But what I want to do is I want to show you a new product that's going to release tomorrow, so Tuesday at 1 p.m. I'm going to get the video up today, which is Monday, so you get a good look at the product. It's a product that's been in development for about a year and that I've been testing for about the last four months. And I just got the final version. I got the final prototype version that I've been testing. And I just got the final production version, which has one color change to it that I have now and I've already been using it. So it's a piece of gear that's very versatile for you. And I want to show you some of the uses for it today, give you an up close look at it today. And it's called the Pathfinder Forester's Quilt. Stay with me. Now, this Forester's Quilt is made to do lots and lots of things. And the first thing that I should talk about in this video before I show the product is to tell you that it's nothing new, all right? The Forester's Quilt concept is not something that's new. It wasn't new when Helicon Tech came out with the Swagman Roll. This type system has been used for a long time. Ecotat, which is a company that makes sleeping bags for the military, had the same type system of a quilt or sleeping bag that could be unzipped in the middle so you could wear it as a poncho liner. They made that in a couple different bags for the military, a lighter weight bag and a heavier weight bag. I have one of each of those. Jacks are Better, which is a hammock company, back 10, 11, 12 years ago, was making under quilt for a hammock that was downfilled that had a split in it where you could open it up with Velcro and wear it as a poncho liner, or it had straps around it. You could wrap it around it to wear it like a vest. So this is not a new concept. However, what we wanted to do with this was I wanted to make it with some certain specifications to make it easy to use and make it a little bit more conducive in a couple ways than the Swagman Roll is for a hammock under quilt. I also wanted to take some of the good features I thought were of the EcoTat and combine them with something that was more like a poncho liner material. So let's look at this thing real quick. I've got mine stuffed into a Pathfinder Scout pack here. So what I tend to do with these things is I tend to stuff them into my backpack or my rucksack or stuff them into some kind of a dry bag. Now this comes with a, you can see this thing's already dirty. This comes with a stuff sack that you can put it into, just like most sleeping bags have a compression sack. This has one of those type sacks. However, what I find is it's much easier for me to just stuff it into the bottom of my backpack or stuff it into the bottom of a dry bag or the bottom of a pack basket or something like that. This takes up about less than half. I mean, we're clear down to, here's the top of that thing in this Pathfinder pack. So it takes up the bottom third of this Pathfinder pack. It would take up about the bottom half of a 20 liter dry bag. So you've got plenty of room in there to put sleep clothes, hammock, suspension system, tarp. You've got plenty of room to put that stuff in either one of those containers so that you can carry it more conducively and easier than messing around trying to put it in its own individual sack every time. Now, we're gonna pull this thing out of here real quick and we're gonna talk about some of the specs on this thing. All right, so you can see here, in the center, it has a zipper. And that's so that you can wear this as a poncho liner, or you can wear it as an individual piece of outerwear around camp, and you can tie it around your waist with a set of straps that are on this thing already. We'll talk about that in a minute. That's very similar to something like the Swagman Roll. The difference is this does not have a hood. The EcoTat system didn't have a hood. The system that was made by Jax or Better way back in the day didn't have a hood. I haven't found it necessary to have that hood on a poncho liner because I'm generally wearing a hat or something like a wooby anyway that's got a hood on it, a wooby jacket or some kind of an outer, outer shell jacket. And so this is just something to keep me warm around camp in the mornings or something like that. And I really don't need the hood for that because I can just put on a toboggan, put on a hat, put on a toque, something like that, and I'm good to go. So that zipper is big enough to go well over your head and it's quilted black on the inside and earth brown on the outside. So that's just a real quick look at that. Okay, so the quilt itself is 57 inches by 79 inches, and it weighs 3.2 pounds total. So it's a much heavier duty, heavier quilted blanket than 
the Swagman Roll, even the Swagman Basic. And really, the Swagman Basic is one of my favorites of the Swagman Roll series, but this is even warmer than a Swagman Basic. It is 210 ripstop nylon with hollow cotton fill, and the temperature rating of this is 32 degrees naked, basically, okay? So if you've got clothing on underneath this or some type of a base layer, a merino wool base layer, then you could drop that down quite a bit more, 10, 15 degrees more, but this is good to zero as is right now. Now, let's talk about this a little bit. You can see that there is a shock cord on this, and the shock cord on this is very, very thick, and it's got a stop on it here, okay? And that is in a sleeve that goes down. Basically, both ends of this have that same shock cord. Now, it has a zipper. Let me see if I can flip this around a little bit so we're not getting such a pain here. It's got a reversible zipper so you could have it black side out or brown side out. And it's got a steel zipper in it. I'm just going to put this zipper down to the bottom here and connect it together real quick to show you this thing. Hands are a little bit cold this morning. So it's got a zipper that zips up one side, but it does not zip across the bottom or the top. Again, there's a reason for that, and it's very similar to the reason with the EcoTap, okay? So the way this thing was designed is if you wanted to use it as a sleeping bag, and it's 57 by 79, if I didn't say that already. So if you wanted to fold this in half, zip it up to one side, and use it for a sleeping bag, what you would do is you would create the foot box by this compression cord. So you would squeeze this cord down, just like this. And you take the other side and you squeeze the cord down, just like this, and run the stoppers up to it. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a foot box when you zip this thing up that looks about like this, okay? You could sleep in this in your boots if you wanted to because you can put your boots out the bottom. I see Zahn's come to visit. You could put your boots out the bottom of this if you wanted to, and that's the reason the EcoTat did not zip up at the bottom was so that you could sleep in your boots, and you can do the same thing with this. However, what I've found with this is this is better if you're going to use this as a sleeping quilt and really quilts are better than bags in a lot of ways. They're starting to find that out the more and more research that's done because if you're laying on insulation, you're compressing it. When you compress that insulation, it loses insulation value. So by using this as a quilt, you get the full width of this over the top of you and you sleep on top of something that protects you from conduction on the ground. And that's really the key to a sleep system is to make sure that you are protected from conduction and you're not gonna do that by sleeping on top of the batting. You're gonna need something extra, some kind of a pad, some kind of a litter bed, some kind of an underquilt if you're sleeping in a hammock. So this is better and more conducive to being zipped up just a little bit, closed up like this for a foot box, and then throwing this over the top of you in the fashion of a large quilt with just a box to put your foot in and the rest of it is over your body, okay? That's the better way to use this and that's why it was designed like this. The other reason it's designed with shock cords on both ends is now once I've compressed this up and I've got these two tails, I can now use this as an underquilt for a hammock. And generally what I do is I just take these tails and I put a slip knot in them just like this. These tabs will stop it from slipping through and I hook this to my carabiner and this becomes my underquilt and it works really well. I'll show you guys that in a few minutes here. We'll set it up, okay? One of the other main reasons this thing was designed the way it was was so that it could be used in conjunction with the Pathfinder bedroll. Now, I've got the prototype one in my bedroll now, which is exactly the same as this one. It's just a different color. It's gray on the inside and brown on the outside because they didn't have the black ripstop nylon fabric. We had to purchase that when we made the order so that we could get this brown and black. And you can see this thing's got a lot of dirt and mud on it but it is a semi-waterproof material, okay? Just like a wooby liner is. Water will beat up on it. Now you could soak it wet for sure, but water will beat up on this material. And you can see how thick this thing is when it's folded in half. That is a heavy duty quilt, okay? So it's really, really nice for sleeping on. And you can just open this thing up like a blanket and throw it over you as well if you want to in something like a hot tent or if you're cowboy camping on the ground and you want to sleep on top of the bedroll because it's a little bit warm outside, throw this over top of you, you're gonna be gold. All right, guys, so we've got the hammock set up out here now in a normal configuration on the tree. And we're going to use this 
Zahn's bumping into the tripod. I apologize for that. He thinks he has to rub the tripod for some reason. Quit, Zahn. What I've done is I've taken this quilt and I've cinched up both of these shock cords and compressed them together. And that's closed the end of this into almost like a foot box configuration. And I have not zipped it at all. You can see that this is unzipped completely. And the shock cords are tied tight to close the end. And all I've done is put an overhand knot in that cord with a little bit of tail. This is what I'm going to connect to the carabiner. And it's going to give me the stretch I need for this to make a good under quilt. So let's look at that real fast. So now I'm just going to walk over to my carabiner. And I'm simply going to clip this in just like this. All right. And that's one side. And when that stretches out, it'll be down here on my hammock where it needs to be. And I'll show you that in a big picture here in a minute. I'll connect the other end the exact same way. All right, so now we have the quilt underneath our hammock. And honestly, I haven't even laid this thing yet, so it's gonna stretch some. I'll have to make sure that the camera is gonna pick this up. It's not, I'll have to lower the camera a little bit, which is fine. Let me lower that just a shade. Okay, now, let's get this net kind of out of the way, this bug net out of the way. All right, now, get back in this dude. All right, so, the way you manipulate these things, and I obviously shouldn't be doing this in my boots, but I'm going to anyway. You make sure that your quilt is out here on the outside, just like this. And when you crawl inside your hammock and you lay down, you pull that quilt up on the side just like that and you've got that thing up to your head and down to your feet and you've got some air space in between here i'm smacking the cat sorry about that zon and you've got that quilted space here that is holding in warmth and that's exactly what you want and the shot cord allows that listen cat this is not going to work for me you can't sleep in the hammock we're not sleeping tonight we're not sleeping out here tonight you have to go. The cat's not having any of it. The cat loves the hammock, for sure. All right, this is a very, very comfortable way to use this piece of gear. You can decide whether you want this for an underquilt or an overquilt, or you could always carry two just in case, or you could carry a dedicated under overquilt and this. And that's probably what I would do. I would carry something like the Hammock Gear Burrow as my overquilt because it's very lightweight and compressible when we made it down. And then I would use this, which is more multifunctional in nature than that is for my underquilt. And I would use the burrow for my overquilt. Easy enough to stuff both of those things in that Pathfinder Scout Pack or even a 20 liter dry bag and still have room for your hammock and things like that. So this is how you're gonna use this in underquilt fashion. If you use it for an overquilt, you just take it off the hammock, leave one end of this thing set up, and then you would bring it inside. And I'll show you that now too as well. <laughs> Get out of here, you. <laughs> Crazy. Now, if you wanted to use this for an overquilt, you would leave one end of it shut for a foot box and you would just take the other end and take your knot out of it. And again, this is stretch cord. So it's not gonna be difficult to pull these knots out. If you just put an easy overhand knot in there, it's gonna be easy enough to get that out. Not gonna be a big hassle at all, okay? There we go. Now, once you've undone this thing, then you can just pull these to the end or at least out of ways, and then stretch it back out. And now you've got a quilt again, double-sided, and you leave the foot box in. So what's that gonna look like when we get in the hammock, all right? So if we wanna use this for an over quilt, and again, I'm in boots here, not really a good thing, but that's okay. You've got this foot box at the bottom that you can shove your feet into, and you can just pull the rest of this quilt over the top of you inside the hammock and you're good. And you've got an over quilt situation for the night. This Forester's quilt was also designed specifically to work with the Pathfinder bedroll. And I have the Pathfinder bedroll sleeve here with a set of badger claw bedroll straps around it so you can carry the bedroll in the woods. And this is your entire sleep system for cowboy camping. And it also works well for a raised bed. So. The way we've got this set up, let me pull this thing off of here for a minute real quick and roll it out for you and show you. The way this is set up, 
I'll lay it over here on the ground for you so you can see it better. You can see that when you roll it out, you have the bed sleeve, the quilt, and this again is the prototype. That's why it's gray and not black. And then you have a self-inflating double valve, double brass valve air mattress in here that is coming here in a few months, okay? It was built to be a together system. Now, if I'm going to sleep on the ground in this as a cowboy bedroll, I'm just gonna roll it out, crawl inside, get my air mattress blown up first, obviously, crawl inside, I'm ready to rock and roll. Now, if it's too wet and I wanna get off the ground with this, or for some reason I don't have a mattress or a way to make some kind of a mattress, so I want something that's suspended, or I wanna take advantage of convective heat underneath a raised bed, then I can use this as a raised bed sleeve and use these two components on top of that, or just use this and this as a bed and not carry the air mattress. So it's really a system that's built a piece at a time. I can use everything together if I want to, or I can use it one piece at a time for different applications as well. So let's set this up. This is obviously easy to figure out. The bedroll configuration is just boom, 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 and you're done, ready to rock and roll, roll it up, carry it out, right? If you're gonna use this as a raised bed, then there's a little bit of a trick to this because it does have eyelets on the side here so that you have a flap more like a bedroll. And you have to kind of close that up to make this into a raised bed. So I've got a raised bed configuration here right beside me on the ground that we use for demos. And I'm gonna show you that sleeve in that system real quick. Now, you can make a raised bed as complicated as you want to to make yourself feel better. Or you can do it the easy way. All you need is a saw. If you just cut forks, you're gonna need four forks out of trees. And you lay those forks on a tree that's stable and put them at about a 45 degree angle. Interlock those two forks and put them on the ground. You have the tripod now base that you need for a raised bed with no cordage whatsoever. And all you need is a saw to build this. Okay, so a couple of things we wanna do. First of all, again, all we need is a saw. We're gonna cut ourselves a thin sapling that we can sew in here just like this and weave it into these holes to make this a solid tube. We have two timbers here, about four inches, that are about 10 feet long. Again, all we need is a saw for that. And we're gonna put big end to big end, little end to little end. In other words, we're gonna opposite these things. So if this is our small end of this log, we want the large end of this log in opposite directions. We're just going to Chuck those logs inside this sleeve. We'll sew this thing up in just a minute. We'll get this done first. And all we're gonna do is open it up and slide it up these logs just like this. A little at a time. If you're only one person doing this. Now we'll get this sewn up real quick. Okay, there's nothing difficult about this. Just even these up, take your stick, run it through the grommets just like this, and then back up through in weaver style. You got a knot on there, might cause you a little bit of a headache. And this will be enough friction wise, even with this little green sapling to hold this in place. I'll show you that when we get it up. Give ourselves a little bit of stick out there and then get the last one here. There we go. And there we go. Now we're done. We've got it sewed up. We're ready to rock and roll. Once we've got our bed laid out and it's ready to rock and roll all we really need to do now is pick it up and drop it over top of these uprights 
Now we've probably got a little bit short distance here compared to the length of that bedroll sleeve, which is a little about eight feet long, I think. We probably only have about seven foot of span here. So we may have to push it up a little bit, but this will give you a really good idea of how it works. We generally use trash bags for this at the school when we're teaching it. We use six mil trash bags as our tube. Two of them overlapped. And so you can adjust that real easy. With this, you have a certain length that you're working with and you may just have to creep it up a little bit on the ends. So I'm gonna show you how to do this one with one guy, which is a little bit more of a hassle, but it works. And we'll get that set up and then I'll show you how this works. All right, so for one guy, what you really kind of have to do is just pick up one of these logs and cradle it as best you can and come around here, go inside, swing it around to the outside, drop it over the top like this, and like this, if you can. Work it past that tree. There we go. And then just lay it down on there. Now, then you can adjust how even it is on the tree. Okay, so once you've dropped that on there, you're ready to go, you know? Just take your quilt. Like I said, you know, I've got one end of this made into a foot box and tightened up. So I have a place to stick my feet right down at the bottom, just like that. And I've got a quilt. Now, a couple things I could do here. I can stuff the inside of the sleeve with insulation. I can use an air mattress or I can use a fire for convective heat. But if you're gonna use a fire for convective heat, it really needs to be the length of this bed and you need a tarp that hit the ground on the backside so that convective heat can hit that tarp, come up underneath the bed. So you can do this with no insulation at all if you have the right fire set up and you have a long fire and you have something to the ground to reflect the heat up into the bed itself or you can stuff the mattress in which case you don't need the heat of the fire because you've created your insulation that way and you can take a tarp and close it in to trap body heat or you could use the mattress from the bed sleeve if you had the bedroll system set up and you only wanted to make a raised bed to kind of get yourself off the ground you could put that air mattress right on top of this bad boy which has got a r value of like 5.6 which is gonna be warm no matter what. And then just use this quilt on top of you. Okay, let's talk about plugging this thing into a poncho. And we'll talk about wearing it by itself as well during this segment. Now, this is just a cheap $20 poncho off Amazon. You don't have to have a certain poncho to work with this. It'll work with any poncho you've got, as long as you've got a grommet hole in the corner. And almost every poncho you buy is gonna have a grommet hole in them. They're not all the same size. And that's the downfall of some of these systems like the Swagman Roll that has toggles on it because those toggles will only fit through certain size grommets because it was designed for the helicontact poncho or a military poncho. Whereas I wanted this to be able to be comparable with anything you wanted to buy, even if it was some cheap $20 ripstop, you know, coated poncho that you could buy off Amazon, it'll work with it. So let's talk about how we plug this in. We've got this folded in half right now and we've got the zipper up here. So that being the case, the poncho would go on it like this. Now let's talk about how we connect this to the grommets. All right, so the question is how do we connect this now without toggles here? Well, it's real, real simple. You've got this cord lock right here and you've got this tag of stretch cord. Now, you've got a plastic cap on the end of this thing and I'm not a big fan of that. And if it comes off, I really don't care. I'll just tie a knot in the end of the stretch cord. I'm not a fan of having too much paraphernalia on these things to break because I've already broken a few of those toggles, things like that on the Helicon one by stepping on them and stuff like that because I'm not gentle with my gear. Cord locks are easy enough to replace. This I can just tie a knot in. So all I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna take a bite in that shock cord just like this and I'm gonna shove that shock cord up through that grommet hole. I'm gonna fold this tag end over just like this and then I'm going to cinch that cord lock on it just like that. And now I'm connected into one corner of this poncho liner. And I'll do that on all four corners. All right, now all we gotta do is unzip our inside and we should be right here at the hood, which we are. And all we gotta do is throw it over top of us. Okay, we got this set up. Find the front there. 
Find the hood. There we go. There we go. We're good. All right, so now we've got our poncho and our liner, and we're good to go. Okay, guys, listen, I think the only thing we haven't covered so far is wearing this thing as a standalone piece of outerwear. And it does have clips on it and a belt on one side. So you can just throw this thing over your head, grab the clip on the one side, grab the belt on the other. It's got a slide buckle on it there. Clip that dude together, tuck everything in nice, and jerk that strap down. And you've got a piece of outerwear you can wear around camp, something like that around the fire in the mornings. You can tuck yourself into this bad boy if you need to. Get your hands warm, get them back out to get access to stuff around the fire if you need to. So this is just another option. You could even sleep like this if you had to. Like I said, when you lay on insulation, you crush it. However, if it's all you have, it's better than nothing for sure. So laying on this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just not as good as something else. Listen guys, I think I've covered almost everything with this kit as far as this new Forester's quilt goes, the only thing we haven't talked about is the price. And to me, that was the big sticking point with this piece of kit, was I wanted to make it affordable for everyone. I didn't want it to be $189.95 or $110 on sale. This piece of kit is $64.99 every single day. $64.99, it will release tomorrow at one o'clock, we do have a limited quantity of them on this first run, but they will release tomorrow at one o'clock for $64.99. Guys, listen, I appreciate you joining me out here today for this video on a product review of the new Forrester's Quilt. I appreciate your views and I appreciate your support. We thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our website, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. I appreciate you. Thank you.